When we see these Texans occupy the Alamo, we were talking before, are these Texans, at least in one way or another, ready for a revolution? What do these Texans have going for them? They have plenty of ammunition, plenty of guns. They are armed to the team, but they simply just lack numbers. Now, there's a way of dealing with rebellion. What you should do is crush the rebellion. Bring overwhelming firepower against him. Now, we talked about Santa Ana before and his personality. Santa Ana is tough. He's a warmonger. He has no problem bringing overwhelming force against these Texan rebels. He takes the army north up into Texas, outside of San Antonio, and basically surrounds these Texans in the Alamo and gives them a choice. You can either surrender, or we can annihilate you. You wish there was nothing for you. These Texans are stubborn, though. This is their one spot for rebellion. And they basically tell Santa Ana, come and get it. Now, Santa Ana is kind of looking at his situation. He has overwhelming power and numbers. He gives them three days. And he even tells these Texans, I'm not going to open fire on women and children. If you want to come out, you can. I promise nothing bad will happen to you. Now, if you're in the Alamo and you get that promise, are you going to leave? <laughs> Some people take the option. They get out. And they go looking for help. Now Santa Anna knows this is his opportunity to end the rebellion. After those three days, he's going to open fire on the Alamo. This is going to be some very lopsided victories for the Texas for the Mexican army. There are stories about people fighting as hard as they can, but they're simply outgunned. There is no way they're going to make it out. All 187 Texans are slaughtered inside. But some of those people who make it out do find help. Not far away from the Alamo, they are going to go to a very prominent leader of these Texans. They find Sam Houston. Now I should add, this is eight rings of bells. <laughs> what does this sound like? Just the city of Houston, named after Sam Houston, he becomes one of the de facto leader of this Texas rebellion. He is going to rally more and more people to come to the aid of what we saw as the very beginning and end of the Texas rebellion. He starts telling these people, remember the Alamo. It's time for our revenge. He's going to take off with hundreds of Texans looking for Santa Ana and his army. They catch up with Santa Ana just a few days later, and they find Santa Ana and the Mexican army doing what probably they should have done. Traveling during the day in Texas is not easy. It's hot. It's a brutal climate. Santa Ana does what he probably should do. He tells his army, we're going to rest during the day and travel at night. So now, take a nap. It's here where Sam Houston and these hundreds of Texans, armed to the teeth, find Santa Ana and his army taking a nap. Now I should ask, if you're Sam Houston, if you're these Texans, and the enemy is taking a nap, what do you think you should do? Yeah. <laughs> you should attack right now. Strike while the iron is hot, while you have an opportunity. What we are going to see is these Texans get their revenge at what's called the Battle of San Juacito. They move on this Mexican army that is very ill-prepared to fight at this moment. This battle last 16 minutes. <laughs> 16 minutes to get their revenge for what happened at the Alamo. 
Now, they're going to basically annihilate the Mexican army and even capture Santa Ana and give him an option. You can either die right now or grant Texas our independence. What do you think he's going to choose? God. He's going to live to fight another day. He is going to give Texas their independence and simply say, you'll see me again. Now, this is where things take kind of a weird turn. Texas has just won their independence. It's 1836. And they said, we've done it. We've broken away from Mexico, who's denying us our unalienable rights. What we need to do all immediately is we need to become a state. Now I should ask, why do you think they want to become a state? Yes, ma'am. Because they probably looked up to America, they thought, oh, that's a good country, why are we doing that? They're Americans. <laughs> they came from the southern states, they simply were in Texas, and now that Texas is independent, they say, we want to be a state. They apply for statehood, and the federal government says, not so fast. You're a bit of a problem. If we bring you in as a state, you're a southern state. You'd be a slave state. Now keep in mind, it's 1836. This is before the Civil War. If we bring in an extra slave state, we have one too many slave states than free states. The balance is upset. Now, this unbalance is going to be very, very significant when it comes to votes in the Senate. Now, remember, how many senators does each state get, no matter how big or small you are? Two. We get two. If we have an extra slave state, then we have free states. How many extra senators are there from slave states? Two. What does that mean for votes in the Senate? Who's going to win every vote? Slave states. We can't have that. We have to have balance between free states and slave states. So here are the Texans saying we've broken away from Mexico. We want to be a state. And the federal government tells them, no. What do you do if you're Texas? <laughs> can't be Mexico. You can't be America, so what do you do? You are Texas. You're an independent country for 10 years. They are kind of in limbo here, waiting for the United States to pick them up. If we're going to bring in Texas, we have to wait for another free state to be brought into the Union. For 10 years, they make their own government. They elect their own president. They have their own currency. They're just waiting until there's going to be something that forces America to act. A weird kind of twist. The British Empire shows up. They go to Texas and say, why don't you come into the empire? What a weird thing to have happen. Can the United States let that take place? No. No. You know what happens? What do you know? We're ready for you to be a state. Come on in. Texas becomes a state, and now we're going to have different problems. Texas has been independent for 10 years. When they finally become a state, we are going to have problems with Mexico again. This is what's going to lead to the Mexican-American War. And I was telling you guys yesterday, I have to go into Texas independence before we get to the Mexican-American War. All because we have a situation where there's a chunk of Texas that is disputed territory. Mexico still claims this giant chunk of Texas as being part of Mexico. Texas says this giant chunk of territory is Texas. And now Texas is a state. This disputed area leads to a problem. 
what we're going to see is there is a very small American military cavalry group that is going to accidentally run into a very small Mexican cavalry group. These two groups accidentally find each other and open fire. Now let's kind of play this game here. We have these two cavalry groups basically right here. The Americans fire on the Mexicans, the Mexicans fire on the Americans. What does the American government say about this small skirmish that happens in this disputed territory? What do you think the Americans say? Yes, Andrew. It's on their land. They say, we were invaded. <laughs> we were attacked. What does the Mexican government say? We were invaded. We were attacked. This small little skirmish gets completely blown out of proportion as both sides say, we were attacked on our land. Congress is going to declare war against Mexico in 1846. Now this war is going to begin, and it lasts for roughly two years. Kind of. Let's think through some options here. We could launch this attack from Texas, go all the way through Mexico, on our way to the capital, Mexico City. That's a possibility, but that's a long way, that's a very, it's a complex way of doing things. There has to be an easier option. What else can we do? Go by land or, you know anything? Just go up to where you want the border to be, it's tough. You could do that, certainly, and just say, War's over. You could do that. Yes, Rob? You could use the sea. Now, this is a much better way of doing things. Now, I will tell you, by 1846, we're on the rise. We're becoming a fairly significant power. And by this time, too, we have some very clever generals coming out of the American Military Academy. As if we had one general that we've talked about before, that fights in this war before the Civil War. Remember who was? Lee is going to get his start in this war. Now, I will tell you, most of the significant fighting during this war takes place in the capital. It takes place in Mexico City. You could take the land route and go all the way down to get to Mexico City, but it's so much easier and faster to go by sea. We're going to launch this attack through the, me me, through the Gulf of Mexico. We are going to land a significant force in Veracruz. Now, Veracruz is a very big harbor, and it's about 150 miles outside of Mexico City. After a small battle in Veracruz, we are on the way to Mexico City. Mexico City falls in about a month. This war is mostly travel time. Now, with Mexico City falling, we basically control all of Mexico proper. We could annex the entire Mexican country as we know it today. But what's the problem with that? Keep in mind, it's before the Civil War. What does it create if we annex all of Mexico here? If, what does it make? What happens? State that could be a slave state. So instead, we need a deal. Now, I'll tell you this. During this time, we're going to see very much a shift in kind of world politics. This was always the way things were. If you defeat a country in war, you get the spoils of war. You take what you want. By 1846, there's getting to be a much more connected world, and just taking and conquering territory doesn't necessarily look good anymore. Now there's part of it where you still have kind of the old world. You take the spoils of what you want. We're going to see something here that's a step into the new world. We are going to create a treaty to bring the war to an end. This will be the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo.